what's up guys so the past equations or the equation we've seen so far we've seen batch and continuous flow reactors with constant volumes but what happens with we don't have constant volumes uh, when there is a change in volume or volumetric flow once again this happens when you change a temperature well first of all this, ha this happens when you are in a gas phase so we're going to see special equations that apply only to gas phase now when there is a change in temperature you affect the gas when there is a change in pressure you affect the gas and when you have a change in number of moles you affect the gas it's two moles and then you get one final mole so there is one change in moles so let's analyze now we're not going to see temperature nor pressure we're going to first analyze how the change in moles or number of moles affect our equations now the change in pressure or pressure drop is seen in other chapter I think chapter 4 makes an introduction in how the pressure drop affects packet reactors and since there's a pressure drop, there's also a pressure a volume drop, etc. And the change in temperature, we're going to see that in non-isothermal design, which is chapter 8. So we're going to see just the change in volume, or this guy right here. So where are we? We got our reaction, and hopefully you know by far that when we have liquid phase, we've seen our batch, and you get to this equation. And if you have a flow, you get this equation once again. And if you have a gas reaction, and you got this batch reactor, and you have constant volume, you can get here. But what happens when we have no, or when we have a not constant volumes? We're going to see that right now. And this is a little bit more complex because, well, once again, where is it? Yeah because we're going to account for the change in moles mm, we're going to suppose first that we have the same temperature so it's isothermal, the temperature change is zero and it's isobaric so there's no drop in pressure it's also zero the change of pressure we're only going to analyze the change in moles so for example A plus B turns out to be C and D so there's no change of moles A turns out to be C and D you got first one mole and at the end you got two moles you got a change here so this is what we want to model guys we want to model when we change in moles so this will be a case scenario for the equation we already got you can use them because we have no change in moles but this here and this here have a change of moles so nice let's do it and we're going to see it for batch reactors of course once again we're going to repeat it for batch and we're going to do it also for continuous flow reactors and see you in the next video to see how to model or take out the stoichiometric uh, table for batch reactor what's up guys it's me chemical engineering guy so if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, Experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.